Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. I'm Eric Venner. I'll be moderating this next session. Two quick reminders before we get started. Uh, the first one is after this, there'll be a poster session. So uh, please join and vote on your favorite posters. The uh, other reminder is that um, questions should go in the chat for the, um, for the speakers, and uh, we will try to get them answered. OK, first up is Jojo Xu. He's a PhD candidate from uh, Rice University. We'll be speaking on detecting hidden multifamily households uh, in the US Census. Yeah, um, thanks, Eric, for the kind introduction. Uh, my name is Zhao Zhuo. Um, this is the work I or work with uh, uh, Alan, Beatty, Andrew, and Professor Anshu Malisvarastava at uh, Rice University. Uh, so here we are. Uh, the major topic of our uh, presentation is about data-driven campaign design and evaluation for Houston Census 2020. Uh, the first part is our, our motivation for this presentation. Um, uh, U.S. Census uh, is a very good uh, and very interesting topic recently, especially this year. We have another census, and it determines the federal funds grant and support to the states and communities. Also, it determines uh, another business like a factories and offices and stores. It, and this, uh, of course, it creates more job opportunities. However, uh, there is a, a huge level of undercounting in the US, uh, US census, especially in Houston. So according to a re recent report, the self-response rate of uh, uh, census is like, a, uh, the lowest is about like a 55%. So it's a very high risk of undercounting here. Another thing is like uh, we can use another uh, data resources to do the census. For example, we can use the house information, we can use the income growth information, and we can use the satellite imagery. Uh, the natural use of the data science is like, uh, for example, here we just identify the feature of region by statistic, for example, income groups, the ethics group, the response survey, and then five governors vote on the zip code based on the features and their uh, past experience. And then uh, every validate USPS address get a form. I'm, I can assure everyone may have their form in their mailbox. And also we need to hire a lot of canvassers that make sure like people really filled out the forms. How canvases work is like, uh, basically there are three types of way. The first is like um, door to door canvases and our, another is like street canvases. Another is like uh, um, sending the mail and collect the information of the mail. So here is one major problem here. So it, what, what, what if the USPS miss addresses? So if it is a multifamily, but the USPS market as a single family, so that only one form will go into this house, that will introduce a, a huge level of undercounting. The key puzzle here is how to find the missing addresses. Uh, of course, we can hire somebody and uh, take a look at one by one. However, it is infeasible because there's uh, too many houses in Houston. Another idea, maybe we can try satellite imagery. So the key task is like, um, can we detect multifamily house by just looking at the Houston satellite images and cross references with the USPS data set? Uh, however, there's a one major challenge here. Multifamily houses are very easy to identify in the street. For example, here, if we look at the street, you can identify it as a multifamily house, but it is hard to locate on maps. So here comes with our approach. The overview of our workflow is like we identify effective area so that we our detector can be uh, carefully trained. And then we do data collection on the specific area. And then we came up with our multifamily detector. Um, the first method is like, uh, the first part of our method is like uh, identify the areas that we can study, we can collect the training samples. We use a pilot model from the California that uh, uses the um, uh, uh, response rate as well as other attributes like the uh, average population information in that area. And we uh, use their bad MAF score 
the high M, uh, high bad MF score corresponding to the location that the cameras are should provide more efforts to the survey. That is the uh, location of interest in our project. Then we combine with the low response score, which means that the people over this location have like less uh, response to the census forms. Then we perform a priority based on the uh, two scores, and we suggest the campuses are may focusing on the high bad MF score and the low response rate area. Uh, finally, we have our uh, uh, area of interest. We are studying 77004 area. And uh, how we collect data is like uh, we uh, use a satellite imagery and we uh, collect the addresses from HCAD and mar uh, using a propriety in HCAD called single family and multifamily. And we train a deep neural network to detect multifamily houses. Uh, useful data resources because like a, a lot of like uh, address information are public on the HCAD Advanced Records website. We chose a uh, B1 state uh, category. It consider multifamily or single family for the household. And then uh, we also cropped the aerial image of uh, 2018 data set from the Kinder Institute. So here is the example of the multifamily houses. We can see that uh, it does not have very clear features. Maybe there's too many cars inside of the outside of the house that we can mark it, but it is still a challenging problem. These are some of the single family house example. We can say, for example, it's a clear uh, townhouse or a clear single family house. And we uh, train a, uh, use a data set uh, that contains like uh, that the that, uh, single family house is nine times uh, larger than the uh, positive labels, which is the multifamily house. So, uh, for the data pre-processing, we use, uh, uh, for example, random uh, horizontal flip and normalization to generate rotate images so that we can uh, have the detailed uh, characterization of different rotation of the house. Then we come to our evaluation. For the data pre-processing and models, uh, we use uh, three different networks and we use 10 photo cross validation and final evaluation matrix is ROC and AOC core, as well as the uh, confusion matrix. From the ROC curve and AOC score, we can see that our method achieved a very uh, high AOC score and a very good ROC curves, uh, especially dense net, which is the uh, current state of our deep neural network architecture. For the confusion matrix, we can see that there's a very few positive, true positive, and uh, for, uh, there's a very few false positive and true negative inside the confusion matrix. Okay, here's the interesting part. So th these are some of the detection results. When we do inference all over the 77004 area, because there's a lot of house that is not being labeled on the, on the house. So, so if, if there's no category information about this house, we perform inference on that. So we detect over 2,000 potential multifamily houses, and there's even no information about this house. For example, this house here on the back, we can see there's a lot of car inside here, and uh, it is a very suspicious to be a multifamily house. Another is a very a classic example, which is like a, clearly there's like a two, like a, Units in this house. However, there's no there's no categorical information about this house. Whether it's a multifamily or single family, it's not uh, obvious on the website. Also, we have another example. This is a very confusing example because all of uh basically all of the nearby houses are multifamily, and only this one is single family. So. But our model predicts as a multifamily, so it's a very interesting for the for field investigation. Uh, we are showing more examples. For example, here we can say clearly there's a lot of uh, hidden multifamily houses here, especially the houses in the middle. And after that, um, we are showing th this is to our some of uh, uh, the possibility that we are making wrong prediction because I think maybe this is a single family house, but our detective showed this uh, 
multifamily house, but it depends on the real uh, field investigation. So uh, if we do a simple computation, so we did have over 2,000 suspicious houses with uh, accuracy 0 0.95. Uh, assuming the accuracy, assuming uh, there's average four undercounted people in that house, maybe we are missing over 8,000 persons in Houston. So we are interested in applying this model over the whole U.S. area to see if we can improve the quality of census. So finally, here comes our conclusion. Uh, we propose a new paradigm for the data-driven campaign design by pre compute uh, uh, hidden family houses for the canvassers so that we can focus on the most undercounted area. Then we uh, uh, provide a multifamily detector by satellite images. And then finally, we have the potential to improve the quality of census 2020 by a large step. So the future works contains three parts. First, um, we, we may uh, resume more campaign after the break from COVID-19. And then we may collect more feedback from cameras and surveys because it, in this area, we are very uh, interested in have real uh, investigation feedbacks that tell us whether our model is doing, this, doing the correct thing. And moreover, we want to validate and prove our models. Thanks for listening. Thank you. That was that was very interesting. Um, if anyone has questions, please put them in the chat. Um, just to get us started, uh, one question is: Can you tell from these models what are the features that have been being picked up um, to make the predictions for multifamily houses? Um, okay, so let me scroll it a bit. Back. So when I look at a satellite imagery, so mm -hmm. that is a very cool question. So when I look at satellite, how can we? Uh, what is what feature that contributed to part market as a multifamily? Is that correct? Uh, so I think the major problem is like the nearby uh, neighborhood information. For example, the, the quality of the roof uh, and also is there and too many cars outside the uh, single family house hmm. or there's a big yard outside of the single family house, but it's like not very well shaped. So that uh, we do some visualization on that, and that and that is actually the next step of the project. We want to include the neighbor information, not just the house information, into the training of the model to see if we can improve upon the accuracy. Yeah. And are you is your model just looking at one picture of a given property, or is it a series of pictures? Yeah, for every uh, household, uh, we have the. For the training data set, we just uh, mark uh, one address and crop the nearby 50 meters by 50 meter tiles. Hmm. And then we just make a prediction based on the picture. Gotcha. OK. All right. If there's no other questions, I think we're ready to move on. Cool. Thank Thanks. you.